Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Logic's built-in drum replacement doubling tool. This tool allows you to layer transients in your drum recordings with a MIDI note so that you can use that MIDI data to trigger an audio sample of a kick or a snare or another drum instrument to enhance the drum kit. Now, I know some people are very much against drum sample replacement, and that's totally fine. I use it all the time as a way to enhance drum recordings that may be a bit lackluster. So I'm just gonna cancel this out for now and show you what I have to start with. It's just a very basic drum kit recording. I have a kick mic, two snare mics, three toms, hi-hat, left and right overheads, and a room mono mic. So you can hear that these are completely raw. These are just the raw sound coming off the preamps. Although I do have some uh, drum leveler on the toms and the snare condenser mic just to cut out some of the bleed. And then the gain plugin is on the room mono track just to flip the phase. But otherwise, these are just completely raw with a rough level and pan mix. So the way this works is you're going to select the track that you want to replace. In my case here, I want to replace the kick and snare tracks just to give the kick a bit more fundamental. And I also want to give the snare a bit more body as well. So I'm gonna select the kick track here. And then what I'll do is press Control D. This will bring up the drum replacement doubling tool. And what you'll see this does is it creates a software instrument called Kick Plus just below the original kick track. And on the software instrument track, you'll see that it creates a MIDI note for each transient within the original recording. Now, what you need to do is sort of scroll through and make sure that you're not getting any erroneous kick hits. Sometimes you will, and you'll just have to go back in and manually remove those MIDI notes, but you can adjust how many MIDI notes you get by adjusting the relative threshold here. But first, let's select our instrument. So you can select kick, snare, tom. You can choose replacement or doubling mode. I'm gonna choose doubling mode. All this does is, is if you're in replacement mode, it mutes the original audio. If you select doubling, it doesn't mute the audio. And then the relative threshold, like I said, controls the threshold or the sensitivity of the transient detection. So as you pull this down, you'll see more notes being triggered. As you pull this up, you'll see less notes being triggered. So things like this, these little snare hits in between the kick hits, I don't want those. So I don't want to go too low with the threshold. So I'm going to pull this up so just the kick hits are coming through. So it looks like I've got kick hits for every single one of those kick transients. Additionally, you can choose what note you want the trigger note to be. Typically what I'll do is use the GM drum kit pitches. So kick drum would be C1, snare would be D1. But if you select auto, it should automatically put kick on C1 and snare on D1. There's also a timing offset, but I almost never mess with this. I just leave it alone. And then if I need to make some uh, alignment just adjustments, I'll do that after it's been converted to MIDI. So I'll click OK. Now after you apply the drum replacement, Logic's library will automatically take you to this acoustic kicks folder. And there's also electronic kicks and layer kicks as well. And if you scroll over, you'll see this is in kicks, single drums, drums and percussion factory. So that's where you can find all these individual samples. And it just loads these up on a sampler instrument. The one thing I like to do is the sensitivity, the velocity sensitivity that is, is a bit much. So what I'll usually do is I will select all of these MIDI notes and I'll pull up the velocities on these just to make them a little, a little harder hitting. Sometimes you'll get just really wild uh, dynamics, especially if the kick hits are not consistent. Fortunately enough, this drummer is pretty consistent, so I'm getting all mostly the same velocities or similar velocities here. And you'll see they're not on the grid because we didn't play to a click for this. But now what I have is an additional kick plus track that's triggering MIDI notes. So that's the original kick just on its own. It's got the punch, but it's sort of lacking the body. And then with the kick plus back in, 
And then you can choose whatever kick you want from the menu over here. Now what's really great about this is you can actually just drag in your own sample if you like. So I could swap out sampler here for quick sampler if I wanted to. And then I can just drag and drop in any drum sample I like. So I've got this hard hitting uh, kick sample here that I like. The only thing you gotta remember to do is set the root key to the same note as the trigger note. So I'm gonna roll this down to C1. Let's see what that sounds like. And typically what I like to do is blend the sample in with the rest of the drums. Like I don't want it to be so out there and so out front that it sounds fake. I just want it to reinforce the notes that are already there. So that's the kick track. Now let's do the same thing to the snare. So I'll select the snare top mic. Uh, actually, both of these are top mics. One of them is just a condenser mic, and the other one is a dynamic mic. It's a Shure SM57 here, and then this is a Lewitt uh, LCT40 condenser mic. So typically, if you're going to do drum replacement, you're going to want to do this with your dynamic mics because they're going to have less bleed from the other instruments in the background. So I'm going to do this with my snare dynamic track here. So I'll select the track, press Control D. This time I'll switch over to snare. Again, I need to go through and make sure that I'm not getting any erroneous notes and that all of the snare notes are being triggered, especially these fast notes. You want to double check those. If you have a lot of like fast double bass and things like that, if you're doing like metal, you're probably going to have to do a bit more manual editing to remove some erroneous notes. Okay, so I've got this where I want it, and now I have this snare plus track. And just like the kick track, this has sent me over to an acoustic snares folder, or I can choose several different snare samples. But like I did before, I'm going to pull up the velocities a bit. And then once you find the sample you like, just blend it in the mix with the rest of the drums. Now, just like I did for the kick drum, you can go back in and swap out your snare sample for whatever sound you want. So I'll just go ahead and turn off sampler there, or get rid of sampler. I'll load up Quick Sampler instead. Now, if you want, you can actually build your own sampler instrument with multiple round robins or alternating samples, multiple velocity layers. That's just gonna take a lot of extra work. Or you could simply load up your favorite third-party drum instrument and use that for your sample replacement instead. So there's a lot of options here. So let's see what this new snare sample sounds like. Okay, so the reason why it's all uh, detuned like that is because I didn't set the root key. So let's pull that down to D1. Another thing that's probably a good idea when using Quick Sampler is to load this in one-shot mode. And what that'll do is it'll make sure that the entire sample plays regardless of the length of the MIDI note. You'll notice if you don't use one-shot mode, sort of the tail end of your drum samples will get cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing for the kick as well. I'll open up Quick Sampler and then just put this in one-shot mode. And again, if I mute my samples, And then here it is again with these samples back in. And then you can just continue on mixing your drums any way you like, and then just blending the samples in with your existing recording.
I find this technique really helpful if you have a limited number of tracks or you are trying to record drums in a home studio type environment where maybe you only have eight channels, or in my case, I only had 10 channels. So you may not have the ability to have a kick in and a kick out mic, a snare top and a snare bottom or a snare top and snare side mic. Or maybe you just have kind of a bad acoustic space. So maybe you set up some overheads, some tom mics, and then you throw some triggers on the kick and snare and you use those as your source material to sample to and sample replace with. So it's completely up to you how you do this. I prefer a setup where I'm just sort of tucking samples and blending them under the existing recording to enhance them rather than completely replacing them. So that's how you can use the drum replacement doubling tool in Logic Pro. If you want to practice using Logic's drum replacement tool on your own, I've included all of these drum multi-tracks as a download in the video description below if you want to go check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.